Barnaby Jones, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Buddy Ebsen. Also starring Lee Merriweather. Mark Shera. With guest stars Hilary Thompson, Alice Hearson, Martin Cole, Julie Hill, Jordan Rhodes. Tonight's episode, Nest of Scorpions. Yeah, I'll spend the night up here. I'll just have to get started early in the morning, Paul. Sarah, it's Frank Leeds. He's coming back. <sighs> Better get Aunt Emily. Mr. Leeds. Mister? Boy, have you got a short memory? What happened to Frank, honey? You just took me by surprise, that's all. S Melissa, have you been able to find out anything for me? Find out? About where the old man is. Jason? Yeah, Jason. Jason Turner. He owns this place, remember? Or have you forgotten that, too? No, oh, I haven't forgotten anything. Do you want a room? Yeah. Maybe we can get together later. Why, Mr. Lee, we didn't expect you back so soon. I thought you'd be in Sacramento transacting your business with Mr. Turner. Did he sell you that piece of land down on the lake? Uh, didn't you say it had something to do with a big development? Oh, right in the middle of it, Miss Warren. Mm. Yeah. You might say uh, the whole project depends on it. That's why I'm not leaving until I see Jason Turner. Oh, I'm afraid I don't understand. Oh, didn't I tell you? He wasn't in Sacramento. He wasn't? Well, that's good. That's very good. That looked just like genuine surprise. I think it was actually better than last week when I told you he wasn't in Los Angeles either. Oh, Mr. Leeds. Oh, I'm just so terribly sorry you're having this trouble connecting with Jason. And I have conveyed all the messages that he's left for you. Perhaps he's just trying to avoid you. Well, then why did he contact me three months ago when Pine Lake was rezoned? He started the whole idea. <laughs> Surely you know that Jason Turner is a very eccentric man, to say the least. Oh, Mr. Leeds, I'm sorry. I know how frustrating this must be for you, but all I can promise is that I can tell you when he comes... Forget it. I am no longer interested in uh, where the wild goose goes. Why, I do believe you're calling me a liar. Well, we're finally on the same wavelength. Oh, I wish you wouldn't think that of me. Oh, I'm thinking worse than that, Aunt Emily. I'm thinking you're hiding something. I'm also thinking if Jason Turner can't be found by tomorrow morning, he should be reported as a missing person to the police. Hey, Lee, please. You don't have to pretend you don't know me. I know all my competition and what they're up to. It's the secret of my success, Mr. Baldwin. Well, that's what I want to talk to you about, competition. I mean, there doesn't have to be any if we throw in together. Partners? Sure, why not? We're both after the same thing. What it boils down to is who gets to Jason Turner first. Now, what it boils down to is who gets his land. Yeah, well, why make a horse race out of it? Half a deal is better than none. Not interested. Look, please. I need this deal. My backers won't like it if I miss. Your backers are exactly what I want no part of. Now, the Pine Lake development's not going to be turned into a, a laundry for their dirty money. Look, Leeds, you can't do... Fill that up.
You won't find Jason in there. But it is his house. Yes, but he's gone. Where? If I knew, I'd tell you. Oh, now would you? <laughs> of course I would, Frank, honey. And I really am glad you came back. You interested in proving that? Maybe. Anybody here named Paula Dixon? Who is it? Mr. Jones? Yeah, yeah, I made good time. Traffic really moved right along. Oh, well, it's nice to see you again, Mr. Jones? J.R. Jones. But I called Barnaby Jones. Investigations. Right. Well, I'm Barnaby's cousin and associate. Look, uh, I have nothing against nepotism, per se. But finding Frank Leeds is very, very important to me. And, uh... And my hair isn't gray enough, right? Well, you see, it was Barnaby Jones who handled the insurance case for us last year. And it was Barnaby Jones I called when Frank disappeared. He must have really liked his work. I was impressed. Well, Barnaby always uses good judgment. The best. So how about trusting his judgment one more time? So he sent me. It's just that Barnaby's working on a case right now, and he, you know, he can't really get away, but he'll handle things on his end. I'll find your man, Miss Dixon. Count on it. I like to be called Paula. All right. Paula? I've already gotten out an APB on Mr. Leeds' car. I did that in L.A. And I stopped by the sheriff's substation a few minutes ago, checked over the missing persons report filed by Mrs. Leeds. Uh, Abby, I want to talk to her, by the way. Well, Abby can't tell you anything. Well, she doesn't know anything. She doesn't even know she was about to become the ex, Mrs. Leeds. On the other hand... On the other hand, you can tell me everything about him, right? Except what happened to him. Happened to him? You sure he just didn't take off somewhere? I'm sure. Look, um, Frank and I are a great team, JR. Not just personally, but in business, too. Now, he called me Tuesday night at 6.30 on his mobile phone. He was just pulling into Big Cedar Lodge. I'm glad you were able to come back to work here again this year, Greg. Yeah. Well, this time I told your aunt. It's either head bartender or nothing. Okay. I'll have margarita. All right. So she drives a hard bargain. But everybody's got to pitch in to get this place ready for the season. Tell me. Boy, this tree's really outgrown its welcome. These roots are really bound up. Hey, Greg, they opened up a new disco in town. Can you imagine that? A little place like Culverton? I haven't been there yet, but they say it's not too shabby. Greg? Hey, Melissa. Melissa? Hello. Hey, uh, I've been thinking. Uh, maybe we can get together tonight. I'm closing the bar early, and, uh, well, if you're not busy, maybe we can um, check out that new disco in town.
Sarah? There's a guest arriving and no one's at the front desk. That's not my job. Sarah? Can I help you? Yeah, hi. Uh, there isn't really much business yet, is there? Nope. Season doesn't really begin for, what, a couple of weeks? Yeah, uh, we have a single. Oh, well, actually... Well, I... that's all we have ready. Thirty dollars. Hey, listen, you know, don't, uh, don't make a fuss over me. Just treat me like you would any other very important person. Uh, that's better. I'm sorry. My mind was on something else. You know, you better be careful. Word gets out about that, that smile, you know. This place is going to be overrun with guests of the male persuasion. Are you really a VIP? Well, actually, I'm a, I'm a PI. As a private investigator. My name is J.R. Jones, and actually, I'm looking for a, a missing person who is known to have been here last, Frank Leeds. Oh, sure. It's Tuesday, I think. Yes, it was Tuesday. But he left that same day. He didn't even spend the night. I understand he came to see uh, Jason Turner. Did he ever get to talk to him? Jason's away on business. Do you know exactly what time Leeds left? No, I'm not sure. But I do remember noticing that his car was gone, and that was around, oh, 8 o'clock. Thank you, dear, for taking over for me. I'll take care of the gentleman now. This is my aunt, Emily Warren. J.R. Jones. Now, you He's just a... scoot along, young lady. <laughs> There's still lots of rooms you haven't even touched. Sarah, watch that smile. I heard you asking about Frank Leeds. Yeah, yeah. Can you help me? Well, you see, I had been wondering why he hadn't used his room yet. And then I remembered an argument that he had, and I thought that might be the reason that he'd left. Do you remember who he argued with? It was a man, and uh, I'd seen him around before. I think he might be local. Greg might even know his name. That's our bartender. Ah, do you have any idea what the argument was about? Oh, well, you know, it was a fight almost, it seemed. I couldn't hear what it was, but this man seemed terribly upset with Mr. Leeds. Is your bartender here now? Mm-hmm. He's out in front in the parking lot. Thank you. His name is Scott something. I think he's from Colberton. Been here a few times. Hangs out in the bar. And he and Frank Leeds seem to know each other before the argument. Yeah. They were looking for the same guy, Jason Turner. When was the last time you saw Mr. Leeds? Uh, I never saw him again after he had words with Scott. I guess he stayed in his room. Why do you say that? Well, I closed the bar at about uh, 12 o'clock. His car was still in the parking lot. Midnight? Are you sure about that? Yeah. Mr. Jones, there's a telephone call for you. Thank you. Rick, thanks a lot. Maybe we can talk later. Sure. Oh, right over there. Thank you. J.R. Jones here. Betty Jones here. Ah, listen, don't ever try and register in a hotel under a name like that. Are you speaking from recent experience? What are you kidding? I just got here. I haven't even gotten a decent lead on our missing person yet. Well, we have, Jedediah. All right. The APB paid off, huh? Yes. Frank Leeds' car was found at the bottom of Pine Lake. Sheriff is dragging the lake for his body now. He thinks it was an accident. Hmm. There's only one thing wrong with that, Barnaby. Paul and Dixon told me that Frank Leeds planned to spend Tuesday night here at Big Cedar Lodge and then drive directly to L.A. Wednesday morning for an important meeting with his building contractor. But Pine Lake is in the opposite direction. Good point, Jedediah. There's something else, Barnaby. I've gotten two answers about when Leeds was supposed to have left here that just don't track. Any idea why? No, not yet. I also have to check out a guy who had an argument with Leeds. Sounds like you're going to have to stay up there a while. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Maybe I can get a room for tonight. Talk to you later. A word of advice, young man. Uh, I wouldn't try to register at a hotel with a name like Jones. Well, actually, I was thinking of using Smith. Whatever. Just so I know who to ask for. Bye. Bye. Sarah, I was wondering if I could... You're not Sarah. <laughs> no, I'm not. 
I'm Melissa. Sarah's my little sister. What's your name? J.R. Jones. Jones? Come on, what's your real name? Oh. <laughs> oh, what do you know? What's a J.R. stand for? Uh, that you really wouldn't believe. <laughs> okay, J.R. You gonna stay with us for a while? Well, for the night, anyway. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Jones. There are no available rooms right now. As you can see, we're still preparing for the season. Oh, but I thought Sarah... No, she was mistaken. No, Aunt Emily, number 25 is ready. Sarah cleaned the room this morning. I'll take it. Come on, J.R., I'll show you your room. Thank you. scared to death. I knew I'd locked the door and I wasn't expecting. Well, we don't see you here in the office much lately. I'm sorry I startled you, Paula. I... You know, they found Frank's car. Yes, but not his... I mean, they haven't found him. There's still hope. Yeah, I suppose there is. This is why I came. I wanted to empty our strong box before they... Well, I mean if they do find out the worst. I hope you don't think that's cold of me, Paula. Just practical. No point in sharing everything with Uncle Sam. Paula? Hi, JR. Listen, I just, uh, I just came from looking over Leed's car. I don't think he was in it when it went into the lake. Really? Yeah, uh, both the doors and the windows were shut tight. Now, he would have had to lower a window to let in a little water to equalize the pressure. Otherwise, he never would have been able to open the door. Oh, uh, this is Abby Leeds, Frank's wife. J.R. Jones. Are you a policeman? No, no, I'm a private investigator. I don't understand. I hired him, Abby. I wasn't sure the locals were competent. Well, why didn't you tell me? I didn't want to add to your burden. Besides, Frank had some important business appointments he failed to keep. Well... Yes, of course. Since I stopped working here myself, Paul is the only one who knows all about his business activities. Uh, what about enemies? Does the name Scott mean anything? Scott's his first name. Yeah, Scott Baldwin. It's real estate office down the street. What, is he a competitor? Well, he tries to be. He represents some big Eastern money. Frank always thought it was the mob. You think you can locate him? Yeah. What does this Baldwin have to do with Frank? Well, apparently they had a big argument at the lodge the night your husband disappeared. Scott Baldwin, please. Oh. Well, will you have him call Paula Dixon at Leeds as soon as he returns, please? Yeah, thank you. He's out of town. Hmm. I got one more. What about Greg Saunders? You know him? How are you? I've got to talk to you in a private way. Yeah, Craig. What's oh. wrong? I'll tell you. What's wrong, Greg? What happened to Frank Leeds? That's what's wrong. And that detective guy, Jones, he's been nosing around. Well, why are you telling me? Because maybe I think you were the last one to see Frank Leeds around here. Look, I saw you being coy and playful, running up in the trees with leads chasing behind you. What do you do in there, anyway? Nothing. I swear, Greg, absolutely nothing. 
know what I'd give to believe that, Melissa? You know what I'd give just to make sure that it was nobody else but me? Is that what this is all about? You're jealous? <laughs> yeah, well, maybe it was you done something to Frank. Maybe you just got so jealous that you don't just... Listen. Don't try to turn this thing around. You think I'm stupid? You think that I don't know there's something weird going on around here? And what happened to Jason? What about Jason? You tell me. I saw you coming on to him just like you did Leeds. You were teasing that old man. He chased you into the woods, too. Right back there in the same place. No, I just do that to get away from them, that's all. They're always after me. Men are. I don't know why. What's back there, Melissa? What's out there that's so damned interesting? Oh, Greg, I'm afraid. What of? What the hell is going on here? Something for sure. I don't know what. It's my Aunt Emily. I'm scared of her. She makes me do those things. Oh, take it away, Craig. Please. I'll love you. Just you. Nobody else. I promise. We have to be careful. She'll see us. Now, I'll come to your room tonight after you close up. You can take the paint off a lot faster with a scraper. You must think I'm always on a downer, huh? No, I just wait till I see you're in a bad mood and I appear. It's my new job, making Sarah smile. Well, you're pretty good at it. Just like Princess Melissa's good at making me mad. Oh, I don't know why I hang around here anyway. Have you lived here long? Not really. Melissa and I used to come here to work for my Aunt Emily and Jason during school vacations. Just kind of grew into a full-time job. Sarah, remember you said that Frank Bede's car was gone from the parking lot at 8 o'clock on Tuesday night? Yeah, it was around then. Well, somebody said they saw it there uh, at midnight. It must have come back. Yeah, I thought that too. I, I don't know, I just can't find anybody who's, who's seen him around. It's strange. Well, I better get back to work. Hey, listen, I got a much better idea. How about if you and I drive into Culvert Inn for dinner? Well, I've got all this work to finish. All right, tomorrow night? What happened? Did Melissa turn you down? I didn't ask Melissa. What kind of a question is that? It's called logic. Why would anybody bother with me when she's around? Oh, I get it. You think your sister's prettier than you are, don't you? Well, I do have a mirror, you know. Uh, more desirable. Check her record. More interesting. Right. Wrong. On all counts. I looked at her, sure I did, but I looked at you twice. I'll tell you something else, I'm still looking. I just think there's more to see. In fact, if you turn me down right now, I still wouldn't ask your sister out. What do you think of that, no? Huh? Hmm? You know, JR, you really are good at your new job. How about it? Tomorrow night, if I can get away. I'll let you know. Okay. I'll see you. Bye.
Melissa? Melissa, are you out there? I'm still trying to make contact with Scott Baldwin. It's very important. Yes, I'll hold. I mean, it's really a disappearing act around here, Barnaby. They're still dragging the lake for Frank Leeds, and I can't seem to connect with Scott Baldwin. That's the fellow Leeds had the argument with. Yeah, he's due back from New Jersey today. Now there's another one. Greg Saunders, the, uh, the bartender at the lodge. He didn't show up all night. How's he involved? Well, I'm not sure that he is. I just think he knows something. Funny thing is, his car is still at the lodge. I don't like the sound of that. How far could he get without his car? Not very far, I'm afraid. Jedediah, I'd like to come up there right now, but I just can't leave. Look, now, Barnaby, don't worry. I'm looking over my shoulder all the way back to square one. Why don't you try that fellow that Leeds wanted to see in the first place, Jason Turner? That's square one. He's still gone. Nobody seems very concerned about where, though. He might turn out to be your key. Yeah, and you want to know something, Barnaby? I think it's going to open up a Pandora's box. Well, that'll be just great, thank you. Hello, Abby. I still haven't found Frank yet, Paula. But I don't suppose that surprises you, does it? Surprise me? Well, what do you mean? I don't suppose that private investigator of yours has found anything out yet, either. Well, why don't you just ask him? Mrs. Leeds. I understand motive is a big thing with you detectives. Name of the game. Have you considered jealousy? Maybe Frank's secret affair with one of those Warren sisters out at the lodge suddenly became not so secret. Maybe Frank was killed in a fit of jealous anger. Uh, Mrs. Leeds, are you pointing the finger at yourself? I'm only his wife, Mr. Jones, not his lover. Then again, the motive could be purely economic. Paula's ambitious, you know. In less than three years, she has risen from secretary to assistant to associate to lover though not necessarily in that order. Now, with Frank out of the way, she can simply walk in here and take over the entire business. Well, if that's true, then why would she hire a private investigator? Can you think of a better way to throw off the police? Now, I'm not saying Paula isn't very clever. No, Mr. Jones, Paula's so clever that I don't think you or anybody else will ever find out what happened to Frank. Oh, I'll find out what happened, I promise you. I hope you do. I hope you do. Look, let me call you right back. Abby, you said something a minute ago. Abby, I want to know what you meant. Well, JR, I'll just bet you got an earful about me, huh? What makes you say that? I think she knows after all about Frank and me. She probably thinks I had something to do with his disappearance. Did you? No. But if you're as good as Barnaby Jones thinks you are, you'll find that out, huh? And if you'll be back here at 4.30, I'll introduce you to Scott Baldwin. 4.30, it's a date. Oh, uh, Hanson Rock and Gravel Company. Do you know what that is? What are you doing that for? Well, I can't go to San Francisco with nothing to wear. San Francisco? Yep. First, I'm going to get a lovely little apartment on the bay all by myself. Melissa, why? Because I'm sick of this place. Cramps my style. Nothing but married men and been no place, going no place, bartenders. Melissa, are you on something? No, I'm not. You should be happy I'm leaving, Sarah. You'll have a clear field. Don't push your luck, big sister. Sarah, haven't you got something to do? 
Well, if I don't, you'll find something. I'm not changing my mind. I'm not ever going to be happy here. We can never find happiness anywhere until we learn that we cannot change what is inevitable. I can make it on my own. I'd like to think that. But we both know that you can't cope with the rigors of life out there. You've tried it. You need a job. I have money. Only what I give you. It's my share. And thousands. But only if you stay here, you know that. Well, I can work. In a hotel, I can do that. Hmm. And you'd be a servant. And then you'd come running home again, because here, Melissa, you are a queen. And you have your family to make things nice for you, and to guide you, and to protect you. You need us, Sarah and me. You're all you'll ever have, Melissa. You have to accept that. You have to know, down deep, that you can never, ever leave here. Oh, dear Melissa, you know, I don't like that young man. I think he's cute. Yes, I know you do. And that's why you're going to be nice to him. Very nice. JR, I was looking for you. To tell me that our date is still on for tonight, I hope. Oh, don't I wish. Oh, come on. Don't you ever get any time off around here? Well, not till after the season opens. You know, Aunt Emily's the boss. Mm, a warden is more like it. I guess old Jason Turner just hands the place over to her when he's gone, huh? She's worked for him for years. Then again, I guess it wouldn't matter if he never showed up at all, would it? And Emily would have the run of the lodge, all us assets, forever. Or their power of attorney. How did she know that? Hanson Rock and Gravel did a, a big remodeling job, and they needed the owners OK, and Aunt Emily used her power of attorney. Hey, you really are a detective, aren't you? Sarah, is that the way it is? The way what is? Is Jason Turner never coming back? Has something happened to him? Oh, man, have you got an imagination? Yeah. And you know what I keep imagining? That, I don't know, some deep, dark secret is holding you here and keeping you prisoner. Hey, your job is to make me smile, not laugh. And anyway, I thought you were looking for Frank Leeds, not Jason. I am. Melissa! Yes, J.O.? Have you seen Greg Saunders? No, I haven't. And Aunt Emily is looking for him, too. He must have taken off somewhere. His car's gone. It is. Yeah, not unless he's come back in the last half hour. Thank you. Sarah, how well did you know Frank Leeds? Oh, not personally at all. Why? Well, I was just trying to Sarah? get some... Sarah? Sarah? What do you want? You know what I want, young lady. Tilly, you're busy. I can't, JR. Yes, you can. Tilly, you know, with his fairy godmother, a large pumpkin, and six incredible white mice. Tell her. <laughs> you're crazy. Tell you're going to go to the ball tonight at Louis' diner in Culverton. Oh, JR, I'd love to, but I just can't. Sarah? I'm sorry, really.
Barnaby, thank heavens. San Diego Freeway was bumper to bumper. Have you heard from Jedediah? Not yet. He was supposed to be at Frank Leeds' office to see Scott Baldwin at 4.30, and he promised he'd call the minute he got there. Maybe I'm worried over nothing. I... Chapter 5. Yeah. I, I was about to place a call. Place it. Leeds Real Estate, Paula Dixon. Paula, this is Betty Jones. Is J.R. there yet? No, and I'm getting a little concerned. I called the lodge and was told he had checked out at 3.30. Oh, dear. Paula, this is Barnaby Jones. I want you to stay in your office and don't leave the phone for anything. I'm on my way to Culverton now. All right, Barnaby. You stay by that one. I will. Uh, call me as soon as you can. Sure. And Emily, he knows too much. Isn't there some other way? No, there is not. That choice was made the night we buried Jason. I didn't want him to die. You were the reason for it. I didn't ask him to fall in love with me, an old man like that. You let him think that you'd move in with him. That all he had to do was move me out. I never said that to him. You never did anything to stop him going to throw me out like a used-up dish rag. After all I'd been to him. All those years. But that was still no reason to kill him and bury him out there. I don't recall your wanting to call the police. It was an accident. It was not an accident. When are you going to face up to that? Melissa, dear. When that knife went into Jason, it was to keep what was rightfully mine. And that night, it became ours. And not one of us can ever change that. We have a binding contract for as long as we live. The lodge is ours. The money keeps piling in. And we will never have to need for anything. And we will never let any outsider ever spoil it for us. Never. Now, we know what we have to do. Let's get to it. You've got to get out of here. Wait a minute. Who locked me in there? There is no time. She'll kill you like the others. Who will? I'm trying to save your life. All you have to do is take me with you. 
please. All right. Come on. <laughs> I thought you'd try something like this. What am I going to do with you? Just be careful with that. Sarah? 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 You're not part of this. Yes, she is. She started it. She killed Jason. She killed them all. Melissa. I can't believe that. And she'll be the one who'll kill you. What did I do, get too close to the truth? Much too close. Too bad you had to be a detective. Why couldn't you have been a salesman? Even a tourist? Aunt Emily, please. When is the killing gonna stop? When people start minding their own business. But there will always be somebody else! Sarah, get on with it. Sarah! You don't want to do this. But I have to. There's nobody else. Sarah? All right, wait a minute. Now, why don't you do your own dirty work? Sarah? You can't. No! No! Stop her. Stop her! No, Sarah. No more. Jedediah! Boy, be over here! Everything all right, Jedediah? Under control, Barnaby, but not exactly all right. I'm sorry we couldn't go to dinner, JR. But later, after the season opens, there'll be some time then. Well, it sounds like you stepped into a nest full of scorpions, Jr. You know, Betty, it's funny, but those three women performed like one entity, one scorpion. Aunt Emily, the brain, Melissa, the lure, Sarah, the deadly stinger. You know, I had her pegged as a poor, put-upon Cinderella. I was all set to be Prince Charming, too. Almost wound up digging my own grave. I got the blisters to prove it. Well, I'll tell you what, JR. You can always be my Prince Charming. <laughs> what did I do with that glass slipper? <laughs> you got it on you? Okay. 